It's summer, so we're not only eating like it, we're dressing like it. Well, they say he's not coming back and nothing can fill the void, but at least we can try with food. I'll make some apple pie, come on in. It's Dead Dad's Kitchen. Yes, I did wear this romper in my high school senior picture, so. <laughs> I have a bunch of weird bug bites, so if you see those popping up, you know what that is. Today we're making ice cream. We are excited. Here's what's up. I mentioned in my Whole Foods video that I wanted to make ice cream, and more importantly, I want to make ice cream sandwiches, but we gotta start somewhere. So. We're going to be making our ice cream today. And I'm gonna preface this with, I have never made ice cream without an ice cream maker. So I don't know how like the rock salt situation or whatever would work with this. So if you wanna make this recipe, I would suggest getting an ice cream maker, but whatever. If you have one, great. And if you don't, maybe go get one if you can. And if not, just hang out and watch the video. I bet we're gonna have fun anyway. <laughs> so we are going to make just super classic vanilla ice cream, vanilla bean ice cream. <laughs> I am getting this recipe from Bon Appetit. I don't have enough experience in making ice cream to have my own recipe developed yet. Maybe one day. But this is super like pretty basic and chill and I'm excited to see how it goes. So what you're going to need is some whole milk, some white sugar, heavy cream, five eggs, vanilla bean or vanilla extract, salt, and I think that's it. So we are going to add our one cup yeah. of milk, one and a half cups, of heavy cream. One, one half. Did anybody else have a substitute who came to their school and taught the kids how to make butter, but they had to also eat the butter that the substitute made and it was in a jar that he pulled out of a bag? Let me know. A pinch of kosher salt. Kosher salt's always nice because it's easy to pinch. Quarter cup of sugar. And keep that sugar out because we're gonna need it again. And we're going to get our vanilla bean ready. Vanilla bean's tricky because it's definitely a pricier item. So if you don't want to go through the hassle of that or you can't afford it or you just don't have it on you when you wanna make some ice cream real quick, you can absolutely use vanilla um, extract, but then you won't need to steep it because I'm gonna put the pod in there too. Oh my God. Dude, vanilla is unbelievable. It's also very expensive. <laughs> okay, we have half of our vanilla bean. Um, I'm gonna show you guys how I slice and dice and get all the seeds out. I start by slicing my vanilla bean pod in half and I separate it and then I gently run my knife along the inside of one of the halves. Those are all the seeds that make those pretty little black specks in vanilla ice cream. And then just do it to the other side. And once you're done with both of these and you have plopped the seeds into the mixture, you can put the pod in as well. So I have our milk, cream, salt, sugar, and now our vanilla bean seeds and our vanilla bean pod in there. And I'm going to just start to mix this just so that everything's getting incorporated. You can start to see those vanilla beans coming through and separating, which is always very fun and exciting. I have this on just medium heat. I'm gonna do like medium low almost. And we just want this to come to a simmer. Look, I've got so many little vanilla seeds. <laughs> On my little finger. Ice cream can be a little intimidating because it's a custard base and there's tempering that we've got to do, but we just can't think of it as intimidating because as long as we know what we're doing, we're following our instructions, no problem. I think that's the thing that a lot of people get nervous about with cooking and baking and stuff is like, oh, but what if I do it wrong? Like the people who write recipes are writing them so that everybody can make them really. They want to be made. These recipes want to be eaten. So they're not gonna try to trick you, you know? We're gonna let this come to a simmer. And in the meantime, we are going to crack our eggs and get those together. So we have five eggs. We're going to separate those out. We're gonna put our yolks into a medium sized bowl that we're gonna whisk some of this into, but we'll get to that in a second. Then we're just gonna put our whites in here and save them for something else. We don't need them for the ice cream, but don't waste them. Okay, just making sure this is getting stirred so it's all warming up at the same pace. Okay, so what's going to happen is we are going to let this come to a simmer. Um, and once it does, since that vanilla bean pod is in there, if that's what you're doing, we're going to cover it and let it sit for like 30 minutes just so it gets really nice and vanilla-y. And then we will come back to these little eggies and I'll show you what to do with those. <laughs> Okay, 
so we are almost to the part where we temper our warm cream mixture into our egg mixture, but let's first make that egg mixture. You're going to need your five egg yolks and another quarter cup of sugar. Now we're just gonna whisk this all together until it gets light and fluffy, which is like two minutes, give or take. Let's find out. So we're at light and fluffy egg yolk and sugar mixture. So what we're gonna do is just put it right over here. I'm gonna fish out the vanilla pods. I don't know why I'm doing this with a knife. Actually, I do. It's because I'm an idiot. There we go. Hey. <laughs> so now we take about a half a cup of this mixture and it's still nice and warm. There we go. That's about a half a cup exactly. So we're tempering because if we just put a bunch of egg yolks into our cream mixture, what would happen is it would cook the eggs and then we would have a bunch of little scrambled egg pieces in what should be our custard. So by doing this, we just really slowly bring the heat of these eggs up and then we can add the eggs back into the cream, or to the cream mixture and cook it so that it becomes a custard so that it's okay to eat. We love being patient. There we go. So now we can put our cream mixture back over the heat. Get that moving again. And we can add our egg mixture. And we want to do this relatively slowly as well. Just be gentle. How much, is any of this spilling? I would be so upset. We're just trying to take a lot of care in not scrambling these eggs, bringing them up to heat so that it emulsifies and creates a custard instead of making an omelet. Gorgeous. So now we're just gonna bring this back up to heat and until it coats the back of this spoon, a little thicker than that, but until it coats the back of this spoon, that is when we will know we can strain it and get it cooling. Okay, so we've gotten to the point where our mixture is coating the back of a spoon. I'm gonna make a mess right now. Boop. Wow, I'm gonna be so upset I did that in a minute. So what we've got right here is two bowls. One has a bunch of ice water in it and one is just sitting on there. So now what we wanna do is strain this into that bowl because there will be some little pieces that come out inevitably, which is fine. Okay, so sometimes it goes a little quick. So we're cooling this mixture down because it was just very, very hot. Look at that, so pretty. Oh my God, get out of town. Tastes wonderful. And we're just slowly letting this cool down. And we're doing this method so that it can cool enough where I can still put it in the ice cream maker right now with you guys, because you could just let this like sit out and then come to room temperature and then, and then throw it in the fridge overnight so that it's nice and cool. But we're just gonna do it this way so it expedites a little bit quicker. Okay, so I told you guys I have this very cool nifty little ice cream maker that attaches to my KitchenAid. So it looks like this. And I have had this in my freezer for months and months. So it is fully frozen. Oh, there we go. Locked and loaded. And you've got this piece and this piece and it just pops on. Just pops on and then it latches in. Here's what we do. So our custard has come to a nice cool room temperature so it can go into the ice cream maker without messing up the freezingness of it. Okay, and it'll go and it churns like that. Make sure, okay. It should taste like melted ice cream, and it does. I'm gonna slowly start it churning and we're just gonna add it in. Okay, so it's gonna look like there's only a very little bit. We didn't make a huge, huge batch, but in something like this, it is going to churn up. That's why we have it on a nice slow speed so it churns nice and slowly. It's going to churn up and build a lot of volume. That's what makes ice cream so melty in your mouth and delicious. This is what it looks like right now. So we're gonna let that go for like 20, 30 minutes. And then I have these cute little blank pint containers that I got, got off of Amazon like probably six years ago or something. I was making ice cream a lot more back then. I haven't made it in a while. 
So I have these, but you can totally just put it in like a nice glass Tupperware or plastic Tupperware. But these are what I'm going to be putting into it and then we might do some fun little things when it's done. Okay, so this is where I'm about to pull my ice cream. So I just wanted to show you guys how it looked. This always, all, every single time I make ice cream, I say, has it been in there for too long? It's been so long, is it doing it? Da, da, da. So if for the first five, 10 minutes of it churning, you think it's like not going anywhere, don't worry, just keep churning. Um, if your bowl has been frozen, ice cold, solid, it will work, just, just believe in it. And hey, maybe that's a lesson for everybody. Here's what it looks like. I made this like really lovely strawberry balsamic glaze. I'll make a video with this glaze at some point, but I just wanted to have it ready to throw in there. I'm gonna get this cute little ladle. I can take this out. Ah. Dude, that tastes so good. So now it's like soft serve consistency, which is great. And you can totally, totally eat it like this. But I definitely want mine to harden up and thicken up and all of that loveliness. Wow, it's so pretty. So, we're just gonna start filling them up. And so when I'm making like a filled pint like this, like with a flavor, I'll do a layer and then I'll do an, a layer of the ice cream, a layer of the filling, and then another layer of ice cream. Just so it's sort of like marbly. Just one more little mix. Oh my God. So that is our first pint. And then just pop this in the freezer immediately. I think I want blueberry muffin ice cream, so let's do that. If you guys haven't seen my blueberry muffin video, you can watch it right there after this one. So I'm just gonna chunk some of this up and see if this is smart or not. And it is so... So good. Highly recommend. Making your own ice cream is also one of those things that's like very impressive. Like you guys saw, it's really not that hard. It's a little time consuming and you gotta be like a little on top of your stuff. But like, it's one of those things where if you do it, everyone's like, what you, you made this? And that's um, the only thing I live for, so. Anyway, <laughs> please let me know if you make this ice cream in the comments below or tag me on Instagram and share your pictures with me there. I love seeing when you guys make the stuff that I put out. So please let me know. Also, I hope you're having a great day. And also, also, I hope you're drinking water. If you wanted to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell notification, that'd be sick as hell. If not, listen, I get it. I still hope you make the ice cream. Okay, bye.